welcome to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. Today we're going to have a look at how you do a Modbus TCP um, read um, on a, a Siemens PLC and in this case it's an S7 1500 PLC but really this can be done on a 1200 PLC Any, anything really that has a RJ45 connection. In my previous video we connected PDM to my network using a uh, Modbus uh, to Modbus TCP gateway and I have that connection here so what I'm going to do I'm just going to simulate some values in PDM so when I go to look at my data in TIA portal I know that the value that I'm looking for so here's my device here so this is a, a Siemens Citrans FC410 which is a Coriolis meter with AI display it can be a lot cheaper if you do the visualization via HMI for instance. So we'll open this project and when we're in here the first thing we've got to do is to set the password so go to access management user will suffice and the password is 2457 so we're now changed we can go to simulation here we can simulate the process values and you can see here I've already simulated the the density so you can see there if I want to change that to something else um, I can just enter that and then click transfer and there's my value being simulated so when we do the Modbus TCP connection with TIA portal we should see that density value coming through I can come into here as well to see my volume units before we uh, start programming the PLC up we just need to understand what Modbus values that we're reading so this device um, Siemens have been quite clever you can see that here there's a few memory locations that we can read and the reason that they've done that is because there are other devices on the market that do the same thing and if you want to replace that with a Siemens device then we've copied their Modbus memory map so Crone, ENH, Emerson the devices they've got um, are mapped in here so um, I stick with the Siemens ones the Siemens one is always the, the 3000 and if you have a look here um, these are floating point double words okay and always remember that when we're talking about um, Modbus we're always reading a word so if it says quantity one that's a word okay so um, we're looking here memory location starting 3000 3002 is the next value and then 3004 so that is three times two because each one of these is two words so the the quantity is going to be six so we need to make a note of that the start address is 3000 now this is where you need to be careful um, with Modbus because sometimes some masters are expecting that to be offset by one um, and for this example that is true so that is 3001 for my start address and the length 6. Now what you can't do is read blank uh, locations. So you can see here 3004 but there's nothing at 3006 and 3008. You can't just make that up and say right okay I'm just going to add another 6 on to get me up to this temperature value and ignore the other to memory locations because there's physically nothing there you'll get a bad response back and that read won't work within TIA portal so you'd have to do a separate read for the temperature so we're going to focus on these three process values mass flow volume density start address 3001 everything for this device is in the holding register so that's um, 43001 um, the uh, length then is six because we've got three double words what we need to do is to add the MB client uh, read to our project and I've put this into an FC we have to put it in an FC because we have to use an external data block anyway so the MB client is 
situated under the communication tab if you go to others you've got MB clients and then depending on what CPU you've got you, you can change your revision there to 4 or uh, 4.1 when you drag that in if you go back to what I said earlier the data length so this is the information here sorry that you're reading from the Modbus device the length is 6 the start address is 3001 and the holding register gives that a prefix of 4 and then the mode if you press F1 you can get help on this so here's the help and if we go to uh, MB mode there's all sorts of different functions you can put on here for reading and writing um, but really zero covers a lot if you're just doing reading and you can see here this falls nicely, this uh, row, into what we're trying to do. We're not reading a vast amount of information. Um, so our, our memory location is 43001, and we're only reading 6. Um, we're not reading um, up nowhere near 125 holding registers in one go. So we, we fall within that. So 0 has been put into to that block. Now we just need to create a data block to, to put all of that information. So um, if we do add new block and under here, I'm going to call this uh, Modbus TCP data. And we have that. So I like to use structures. So the first thing we're going to do, this is this MB data parameter. That's where you're pushing the data to. So you're reading it. You need to store it somewhere. You could put it into a memory location if you really wanted to. Um, but uh, I tend to, to use a structure rather than an array. So, And then if you remember each one of these... Uh, values is a is a floating point real so this is um, the first one is mass flow and then that's a real nice thing about a structure you can you can mix it up so you can have different words um, but these three are all the same We're starting a new data structure, and this is a standard data structure uh, within TIA portal. We'll call it connect, that's its name. And then under here, if you type in tcon underscore ip underscore v4, and just hit enter, you'll see an array of information come up now. So we need to fill some of this in. So let's remove the split screen for a second. So the first one is the hardware interface. So if we go to the S7 1500 PLC, we're connected on this port physically. So if we go to properties, system constants, and then it's this local interface here. So 64 is my hardware identifier. So we'll put that in and then the next one is purely an identifier for, for this function because you may be reading more, more than one server or connecting to more than one server. So we give that a 1. And then over here, your connection type, or you can see 11 TCP, that's us. So 0B is 11 anyway, but we'll put that in. And then established connection. So this is whether it's a client or a server. So if you get it wrong, the error code sort of leads you to, to tell you that you've got it wrong, but that needs to be true. And then we come to the uh, information for the server itself. So we have the address, and this is your IP address split into four bytes. And this is the IP address of the server and then we have the remote port so going back to the previous video which you can see the link at the top um, we set the port up to the default port for Modbus TCP which is 502 if you leave your local port set to zero it will just uh, copy that port but if, if that one's already being used it will stick it into another port um, so once we've got that there is something else that we need to do um, first of all, let's just tidy that up and put it in the same folder. Um, we need to go to Properties. 
and then under attributes on tick optimize the block okay and then if we go to split view we can start putting this together so we'll do the process values first they're here so when we do a compile this um, these question marks will disappear so don't worry about that for, for now and then if we just take the whole connection um, array or structure and connect, connect that to there and then we can do a compile so we've got everything uh, set up there one thing we need to do is we've told it how to connect to the gateway but you might have multiple Modbus 485 instruments connected to the gateway so for every separate device you, you'll have to have a separate data block yeah so you can copy this if it's if you're doing multiple reads to the same device but as soon as you add another Modbus slave then we need to add another uh, MB client DB and that can be a little bit tricky where that's stored so if you go to system blocks and then under here you'll see the data block MB clients which is know how protected but we do need to change something I've already done it on this particular one but you can see here MB unit ID this is the Modbus address of the 485 slave <laughs> you can see over here um, it all makes sense when you know where to look for it and I've recorded this video to save you two hours trying to find it so you need to change that to, to match the slave that you're connecting to so all that remains to be done now is that we need to compile and download that once you've performed a, a download uh, if you remember and you can see on this screen I've, I've got my data block up here there's my process values now the units on these are kilograms per second and meters cubed per second and here we have kilograms per hour and meters cubed per hour um, so this is why these are moving a lot more much smaller values uh, but um, you can see they're updating I've got two masters connected to one Modbus device I've got the temperature there um, and there is my simulated density to prove that it's all working 123.4 we're reading it as a float so it's put the decimal point in I just wanted to show you one last tip just before we finished off because this may catch you out and it's to do with this MB client and, and the way um, the data moves within the data block uh, so you can see here there's my value and there's my there's my th and that's what it's reading back so if I change that to 4 it's gonna it's gonna break everything by all means but and download that you can see here it's the my initial value of 3 is still there and if I go to my um, data block it's still happily reading the information now this can catch you out and um, what you what you need to do is just start and stop the PLC and what you'll see it will reinitialize that block and it pushes the fall back back in so there you have it how to do a Modbus TCP read on TIA portal um, don't forget to hit the like button and uh, click on the um, subscribe and the notification bell your support is, is very much appreciated thanks for listening